Minecraft has changed a lot since its creation all the way back in 2009. It's gone from just grass, cobblestone, and black steel Bruh. to 11 wood types, 64 biomes, over a thousand items, dinosaurs, and crocs? What the- and Since 1.20 just released, I thought it'd be cool to play through the game starting in the earliest alpha version on day 1 and progressively updating the game until we get to the brand new 1.20 update by day 100. I had a lot of fun revisiting old Minecraft versions and I was able to make a ton of progress in these 100 days. So make sure to watch to the end to see that. And if you happen to enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year and we're uh, super close. Yeah. So consider subscribing. It's free and it helps me out a ton. But without further ado, I survived 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore, but the game progressively updates. Day 1 started with the first version of Alpha, Alpha 1.0, which is also the last version of InfDev. This is so cool actually. The first thing I noticed was just how green the grass and trees were. I never played in this version growing up, but I do like how green the grass is. Also, for some reason there was no sound. Bruh. But after admiring the alpha terrain, the generation is so crazy looking. I was feeling a little bit silly and quirky, so I decided to chop down my first tree. I was still in a bit of a wacky goofy mood, so I decided to craft my first crafting table and then craft my first tools. Mm -hmm. Alright, so since there's no sound, we're just gonna edit in some uh, wood breaking sounds. Also, if you're wondering how this is a hardcore challenge, if we are in hardcore mode, it's because hardcore hardcore mode isn't added until release 1.0 is a cave i do change the world to hardcore later in the video but until that point i just didn't die what <laughs> This is so weird, I don't know why. Another annoying thing about the earlier versions of Minecraft is that you can't sprint. Some Minecraft boomers like this because it makes the game slower paced, but I grew up with sprinting, so it's mildly infuriating to me. It's gonna be cool to see all this update to like the latest version. I began mining some stone and upgraded my tools. Then I killed some of these pigs for food, and in this version, food doesn't stack. And there's no hunger bar, so eating food just regenerates your health. I continued wandering around looking for some sheep. Oh god, I did not mean to do that. Right here we can use our instant health potion. But instead I found this coal. Okay, yeah, the clouds are really not that high. Dude, look at this landscape. I mean, this is kind of epic. Then I finally found some sheep. Is that a sheep? Oh my god, that's a sheep. Yes. And it was becoming nighttime, but when I went to craft the bed, I discovered that those didn't oh exist god. in this version. So I decided to just dig a hole and wait out the night underground. And I decided to make use of this time by digging out a little area to set up a temporary base. I began cooking my pork ribs low and slow, and then decided to start mining. My first goal for this series is going to be to get full iron armor and tools. I managed to find some coal, and another thing I noticed about this version is that tool durability is extremely low. I've literally gone through two pickaxes already, and I've only been mining for like three minutes. Bruh. Once I surfaced from the mines, it was the morning of day two, and suddenly we were in Alpha 1.1. A ton of things were added between Alpha 1.0 and Alpha 1.1, including a bunch of redstone stuff, snow, cactus, boats, milk buckets, although they're currently unobtainable, reeds, which will later become Sugar King, along with books and paper, clay and bricks, slime stuff, music discs, chickens, and spider jockeys. I admired the beautiful, still very green landscape, and then I went around whacking animals, and then began gathering some wood. The saplings just drop. I haven't even mined any of these trees, and the saplings are just dropping. Alright, but can you make, uh, slabs? Yes, you can? What is this? That's a pressure plate, not a slab. Bruh. Then I added a front door to our man-made cave and went back to mining. I found some coal and then discovered this weird video setting. What? No! Why is this a feature? Why? <laughs> what? I also discovered that item shadows are bugged out in this version, huh? so that's cool. And then I found our first vein of iron and began smelting it. Then I hit bedrock. So I went up a few blocks and began strip mining. And when I tried to mine this vein of coal, I suddenly caught on fire Whoa. for some Whoa. reason. Why am I on fire? I panicked and began eating my ribs to regain health. But when I ate my last piece of food, the fire still didn't stop. I panicked and save and quit the world to see if the glitch would be fixed. But it wasn't. Bruh. I guess there's a good reason hardcore didn't exist in the game yet. What? I just caught on fire for no reason. So I decided to use my first iron ingots to make a bucket, just in case that happens again. Unfortunately, it was nighttime, so I couldn't go out to get water, and I couldn't get more food to heal my health bar. So I went back to mining for the rest of the day. I returned from my 12-hour shift in the mines on the morning of day 3, and now we're in Alpha 1.2. Alpha 1.2 was known as the Halloween update, and added the first new dimension, the nether, which added netherrack, soul sand, glowstone, nether portals, and zombie pigment. Also, just normal pigment were added to the game's code, although they didn't spawn naturally. This update also added deserts, tundras, and fishing, and immediately the game felt a little bit less green. Also, also, my sound finally started working for some reason. I began day 3 by milking this lake, and then I saw my first mob. I then began stealing the skin and harvesting the organs of some local wildlife. I then returned home, and I managed to get a decent amount of sustenance. I began cooking my food, and then made my first chest. I don't know why that's so funny. It takes up a full block. No, that's awful. I then tested my water bucket to see if it worked, but it ended up breaking all of the torches in my mind. Did you try turning it on and off again? And I tested to see if the firebug still existed, and it did. <laughs> 
I then went back to mining for the rest of the day and managed to find some more iron. I returned from the mines again on the morning of day 4 and we're officially in beta. Not that much changed between alpha 1.2 and beta, but now the F3 screen will show your coordinates and eggs can now be thrown with the chance of spawning a chicken. I began day 4 by smelting our iron. Also I noticed this cool bug in the inventory. Whoa, whoa, look at that, it goes behind it, some of them. I then made our first iron pickaxe and began collecting some more wood and lighting up the area around our base a bit. I actually kind of like that, that wood noise a little bit better. It kind of just sounds better, I don't know why. And then I went back to mining. I found a lot of coal, this baby lava pool, this other lava pool little cave thing, and yeah, that was it. I didn't find any iron. This is so sad. I'm sad. I returned from my underpaid labor-intensive job on the morning of day 5, and now we're in beta 1.2. Yeah, I accidentally skipped beta 1.1. My bad. But 1.1 didn't really do anything besides bug fixes and minor changes anyways. Beta 1.2, however, added cake, dispensers, lapis, note blocks, spruce and birch trees, bone meal, and now squids can be milked. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I, I don't know why. I went back to the mines to make that bread on the beginning of day 5, and I almost immediately found iron, and this cool cave filled with water. Then I continued mining until I ran into this lava pool. And then I found some more iron. I kept mining and then found our first vein of gold, and finally, our first diamonds of the world. When I got back from the mines, I threw my single egg and it spawned a chicken. I then crafted our first pieces of iron armor and our first diamond pickaxe. Then I hit the mines again and mined for the rest of the day. I returned from the mines on the morning of day 6, and we are now in beta 1.3. Whoa, everything's different now. Beta 1.3 added repeaters, slabs, and most importantly for us, beds, so we can finally skip the night. Also, the textures for the original crying obsidian block were added in this version, which didn't become an obtainable block until release 1.16 over 10 years later. I began day 6 by making our first bed of the world. <laughs> it makes a stone breaking sound. I then began smelting some iron and went back down to the mines because I mine all day, I mine all night, I mine all the time till those diamonds are inside. But yeah, I mine for the rest of the day and on day 7, we were still in the mines but now we're in beta 1.4. Beta 1.4 added wolves which can be tamed to become doggos and cookies. I went back up to the surface on the beginning of day 7 and began smelting the iron I had gotten on day 6. I then used some of the iron I had gotten to make a set of iron tools and complete my set of iron armor. Now that our first goal is complete, it's time for our second goal, a full set of level 30 enchanted diamond armor and tools, and I decided it was time to head into new chunks because ore generation is updated in the beta versions to generate ore more commonly. So basically we'll find more diamonds in the new chunks. So I grabbed all of our valuables, yeah it's not that much, and set sail. That doesn't make any sense. And I continued walking for the rest of the day. I woke up in beta 1.5 on day 8. Beta 1.5 added cobweb, a couple new rail types, birch and spruce saplings, charged creepers, and now pigs will turn into zombie pigmen when struck by lightning. I continued exploring on day 8 and admiring how cool the edges of these corrupted chunks. We're gonna see a lot more of this because Minecraft worlds apparently don't like being updated from infdev all the way to 1.20. I then found the first biome other than an oak forest of the world, and for some reason these cactus blocks were massive when they dropped. I don't know why. I found this nice flat area on the edge of a forest with some nice natural bodies of water and decided to set up camp here. I'm not gonna lie though, this does look really cursed without any grass. Kinda looks like a level of the back rooms. I began building our starter house in the morning of day 9. We're now in beta 1.6, which actually added grass generating naturally in some biomes along with dead bushes and ferns. So if we would've just waited one more update to travel, we would have had grass. Trap doors and maps were also added. We're not gonna stay here for long, but since we have some resources, I decided to build a decent looking camp. And yeah, this is pretty much it. It looks amazing, I know. Please stop complimenting me, you'll blow up my ego. I then began moving in and discovered this cool glitch. Huh? After I moved in, I collected some sand and began smelting it so I could put in the glass. I then began our mine and mined for the rest of the day. I finished the windows in our house on day 10 and went back to mining. We're now in beta 1.7, which added pistons along with sticky pistons and shears. This is an interesting update because there's actually a whole community of Minecraft players that believe beta 1.7.3 is the best version of Minecraft, and that after this point, the game only went downhill. But I say, even though there have been some negative changes, overall, I think the game gets better and more fun to play over time. But nostalgia is a powerful force, so I get where they're coming from. This was also the last version where the far lands existed. I continued mining and found my first bits of wow. redstone, and then I ran into this lava lake, and I decided to collect the obsidian I would need for another portal in a champion. I woke up on day 11 in a whole new world. There was hunger now, and an XP bar. My chest wasn't a full block anymore, but it was also glitched out. And I could now stack food. You can finally stack food. We're now in the last version of beta. Beta 1.8. Beta 1.8 was a huge update. It added stone bricks and all its variants, mushroom blocks, a bunch of new food types, endermen, enchanting, the hunger system, strongholds, villages, mine shafts, all of these biomes, and the most beautiful feature of all, sprinting. This is basically the update that made Minecraft the Minecraft that most people knew growing up. Most people meaning me. I could also 
still finally changed my FOV to the only correct FOV. I went back to mining and continued mining for the rest of day 11. I woke up on day 12 and the first official release of Minecraft, release 1.0, the adventure update. 1.0 was another huge update, adding brewing stands and cauldrons along with the potion system and all the potion ingredients, along with the dragon egg, the end portal, end stone, and the first boss of the game, the ender dragon, and the third dimension of the game, the end. This update also added the mushroom island biome along with its respective bobs and blocks, nether fortresses which spawned blazes, which dropped blaze rods needed for eyes of ender, nine new music discs, the baby versions of all the passive mobs in the game, snow golems, magma cubes, villagers, and all of these biomes. Also, since we've gotten to full releases now and there aren't 88 of those, from now on the game will only be updating every three to four days instead of every day. After playing with some of the new features, I went back to mining and caving and finally found some more diamonds. On day 13, I decided it was time to leave our second temporary base in search of our forever home. So I packed up our stuff and hit the road. I quickly noticed just how much world corruption updating your world like this causes, but I actually don't mind. I think it looks pretty cool. And then I found our first stock of sugarcane. I continued our journey on day 14 and began collecting some leather we'll need for books for enchanting later on. I also got our first spruce wood of the world and I also found this village. Yo, why do villagers need to look so bad? These have no drip. Literally, these look so terrible. What the heck? They're even like corrupted. They have grass and they had no blacksmith, but they did have these bookshelves that I promptly took a legal ownership of. Then I continued running around, smacking the organs out of the local wildlife for the rest of the day. I continued exploring and committing organ harvesting on day 15 and then I found another village. And this one had a blacksmith, but there was nothing inside. Bro. But they still had one of these library buildings, so I stole their books again. Then I continued exploring for the rest of the day. I woke up on day 16 and released 1.1. 1.1 was a depressingly small update, only adding spawn eggs, these niche biomes, and super flat. There was also a bunch of smaller changes, but nothing too interesting. Other than blacksmiths now spawning chests that contain loot. Bruh. I continued searching on day 16 and found this area. I was actually going to choose this spot, but after taking a second look, I decided against it and went back to searching. I hit the ocean on day 17, so I made a boat and began sailing. I then sailed for half of the day before finding land, and then when I found land, it was this tiny island. Islands are cool, but I just spent 100 days on one, so I'm gonna pass. I then sailed for the rest of the day, and when I found land again, it was just another island. And I think something was actually broken with the generation in this version, because I spent the entirety of day 18 boating, and and the only land I ever saw were just these tiny islands. And I was getting so annoyed by this that I decided to just head back to the land we came from, lest I spend half of this challenge just rowing a boat. So I continued rowing for the entirety of day 19 as well. And finally, on day 20, we were in a new version. Release 1.2 was pretty much just the jungle update, adding the jungle biome along with jungle wood, jungle leaves, jungle saplings, and ocelots. Desert wells, iron golems, zombie sieges, and these other things were also added in this update. But I finally reached land on day 20, and this is the spot I picked for our base. It's got nice green grass, lots of trees, it's pretty flat, and is by water. The only thing it was missing was some open space, but we can just cut down the trees and make our own space. I set up camp and was trying to set up our enchantment table with bookshelves, but for some reason books were crafted differently in this version. Uh, so apparently I hadn't updated to 1.2 yet, and in 1.1 you can craft books without leather. So on the beginning of day 21, I quickly crafted a bunch of vegan books and then updated to 1.2. I also finally converted the world to hardcore mode. I then began deleting this local ecosystem to clear an area for our base, and I did that for the rest of the day. I began day 22 by lighting up the area and began setting up our enchantment setup. And in this version, you need 30 bookshelves to fully power an enchantment table, so it only goes up to level 16 with this many bookshelves. Then I went back to committing deforestation, and while I do that, I'd like to explain my base plan for this video. Basically, I want to dig a giant hole directly into the ground, but the floor of the hole is slanted up towards the surface, and on the other side of the circle, it meets the surface, and then just build a normal cool base inside the circle. Basically like an artificial hill, because there's not that much cool terrain generation in these versions. So I marked with cobblestone where I wanted the circle to begin and end. And then on day 23, I began our mine. I mined it down to Y11 and began strip mining. And there were a lot of ores in this version's generation. It felt like every few blocks I ran into some kind of ore. On day 24, I continued mining. And I did that for a while, like the whole day. So, uh, how are you doing? How's your day going? Good? Good. Okay, anyways, enough about you. I found some more diamonds, and then I went up to the surface to empty my inventory and craft some stairs. And then I began placing the stairs into the staircase. Then I went back to mining for the rest of the day. I woke up in the mines on day 25, and we're now in release 1.3. 1.3 added six-sided wood, emerald ore, and blocks along with emeralds, and the trading system with villagers. It added ender chests, stairs and slabs can be crafted in different wood types now, enchanted golden apples can be crafted with nine blocks of gold, and also desert pyramids and jungle pyramids. I continued mining on day 25 and found some more diamonds. I'm not mining them though, in the hopes that I get fortune on my pickaxe in the near future. I then began building the outline for the circle with cobblestone, and this is just a 35 block diameter circle. And I continued working on that on day 26, took a little break to start a farm, and then began thickening my mine to be two blocks wide instead of one. And then I went back to mining, found some more diamonds, this creeper tried to blow them up, and then I went back through the mines, mining all the ore I had left behind earlier to get some XP. And I saw Slenderman.
Uh, I began day 27 by attacking this tall grass, and then began work on digging out the circle. My tools aren't very fancy right now, so I just dug out this little staircase, and I plan on coming back here every once in a while, and making each step a block longer until it reaches the other side of the circle at the top. But I did that for the rest of the day. And I began day 28 by putting in the second set of stairs for the mine entrance. Then I went back to mining. And for me personally, these versions of the game are the most nostalgic to me. I think I first started playing Minecraft around 1.2 or 1.3, and I never really made it super far into my world. So the main things I remember are grinding for diamonds and building some early game farms. So honestly, this part of the video was especially fun to record, seeing as I was basically just reliving my childhood. But time must move forward. It's day 29, and we're now in version 1.4. 1.4 brought back update names, and this one was called the Pretty Scary Update. Being called that because it added wither skeletons, witches, bats, and the second boss of the game, the wither. The wither brought with it wither skeleton heads, wither stars, and beacons. This update also added item frames, witch huts, command blocks, anvils, flower pots, walls, and mob heads, as well as potatoes carrots, pumpkin pie, and a carrot on a stick used to ride a pig. Literally, who even remembers this exists? I continued mining, found this cave, continued mining, and then found some more diamonds. I went back upstairs to touch grass on day 30, but also continued mining out the circle. I would do a cool replay mod shot of me digging this out, but replay mod doesn't exist until like 1.8, so just imagine that this looks cooler. I did that for the rest of the day, and then continued doing that on day 31, and I managed to finish making the stairs two blocks long. Then I decided to delete this small body of water and extend my sugarcane farm a bit. Went back to the mines on day 33, and I had finally reached level 30. So I decided it was time to enchant my diamond pickaxe, and I got silk touch. And and it used up literally all my levels. Bruh. But I decided to put it to use anyways and go gather up all the diamond ores we had found before so we could hopefully fortune them later on. I then went back to strip mining for the rest of the day. I continued mining on day 33 and we're now in 1.5, the redstone update. This update obviously added a ton of redstone stuff including blocks of redstone, daylight sensors, droppers, hoppers, comparators along with quartz, and all of the blocks that it makes. I then continued mining until I found more diamonds, I silk touched them, and then went back up to the surface. I made an anvil for some reason and then decided to use the obsidian we got earlier to construct our nether portal, but I miscalculated how many I needed for a full portal, so it's gonna look unsatisfying for a while. I then decided to hop in to check out the old nether, and I would say that netherrack is ugly because, let's be honest, it is, but I also grew up with this texture, so I'm a little nostalgic for it. And a ghast immediately shot at me, so I began constructing a cobblestone shelter around the portal to make it safer. I began day 34 by preparing to build our mob farm, so we can begin getting max enchants on all of our gear. I built a dock out into the middle of this river, and then began building up 200 blocks. This mob farm needs to be as high up as possible so we can look down on all the poor people below. I mean, because it'll make the farm more efficient. So I built up about 200 blocks, and then made a little platform. And I'm making this above a river so I can just jump off into the water. I then began adding ladders all the way up the cobblestone pillar. I began adding all this water at the foot of the ladder to make it safer, but then I realized it would make more sense to just make the platform small. So I did that in the beginning of day 35, and then I made a ton of trapdoors and slabs, which we'll need for the farm, and began climbing up to the farm, which takes like two minutes, so. Nope. Okay. That's gonna be annoying. And then I began building the farm. I was looking at a tutorial at first, but honestly, I made this farm like a billion times, so I just remembered how to make it. I built the killing chamber, and then began on the 23 block drop to get all the mobs down to half a heart, so we can turn their bad day into their last day with one hit. And then I began work on the water channels. I worked on that for the rest of the day, and then performed a 600 foot Olympic dive to sleep, and then on day 37, I was smart enough to forget to bring my bed up to the farm. Whoa. I forgot to get the bed. And then continued working on the water channels and spawning platforms. I built four 8x8 platforms with water channels in the middle that will funnel all the mobs into the middle. And these trapdoors trick the mobs AI into thinking they're a full block, so they walk over them and fall into these water channels. It was becoming night again, so I performed another Olympic dive, broke all the bones in my body, and then on day 37, we were in 1.6. 1.6 was the horse update, and hence the name, this update added hardened clay. I, I mean horses. It added horses. Along with its various variants, donkeys, mules, skeleton and zombie horses, horse armor, hay bales, leads, name tags, blocks of coal, carpets, and stained clay. I'm still the, I'm still in the Steve skin. Yeah, look at everything. It looks like a thing. Like a base. I was running out of cobblestone, so I looked at our disorganized chest for some. Cobble, cobble, cobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. But I didn't really have that much. So I decided to continue mining out the circle. So I began making the staircase three blocks long. And I did that for the rest of the day. And I began day 38 by continuing mining out the circle. And I managed to finish making the slope staircase thing three blocks long. Then I finally had enough cobblestone to finish the XP farm. So I climbed up to the farm and began trying to figure out how to get up to the spawning platform. I thought about just swimming up this water canal, but swimming is just too slow in this version and I probably would have drowned, so I just towered up. And I began on building the wall for the farm. And then this water source forgot it wasn't a block. What? 
That's funny. I finished the wall and then began work on the ceiling. So our subjects never know the light of day. And I continued on that for the rest of the day. And then managed to finish on the morning of day 39. So I knocked out all the torches inside and closed up the farm. And when we get to the bottom of this dirt pillar, it should be working. But some tall grass spawned, so I sent him down to the poor people below. And the farm was working. But I think I made the drop too tall because they were all just dying on impact. So I began heightening the platform that they fall onto. And yeah, it was definitely working pretty well. Yeah, I also extended the platform a bit so I had some more room. Yeah, it was definitely working, but most of them were still dying on impact. Why are they all dying? Which we don't want because this is an XP farm, so I began raising the platform up another block. Which was very easy because there were definitely not mobs falling every 0.1 seconds and getting in my way. I then gave up raising the platform for some reason and instead began moving our enchantment setup up to the farm to make enchanting all of our stuff easier. I mined the books with our silk touch pickaxe and then on day 40, I made the trek up to the farm and also completed raising up the platform. I began expanding the platform more to make room for the enchantment setup and then put everything in yeah this mob farm works insanely well in this version for some reason so many mobs. and honestly maybe it's a little overpowered can you absorb the xp fast i jumped down to the base to make a fresh new diamond pickaxe and then skedaddled up to the mob farm to get a fresh level 30 enchantment on it. bro bro yeah i was hoping for fortune but uh, that's okay i guess i continued smacking mob legs as i also expanded the platform a little bit and then i went back to smacking legs my inventory was getting full of bones and rotten organs so i made a chest to store some of the loot we were gonna get from this farm i would set up an automatic collection system for this farm but I wouldn't, because I'm too lazy. I decided to give my luck one more chance, and mined three diamond ore to make another diamond pickaxe, and try for four. And on the morning of day 41, we were suddenly in 1.7. 1.7 was the update that changed the world, being called that because it added a ton of new biomes, including mesas, savannas, sunflower plains, roofed forests, birch forests, taigas, mesa taigas, deep oceans, extreme hills plus pro max, and over 20 variants of these biomes. Also the acacia and dark oak trees, along with their respective wood types. This update also added a ton of new flowers, as well as two tall grass and ferns, these fish types, all these fancy natural blocks I'm too lazy to list off, and stained glass. What is that? What is going on? Oh, is it because I'm under that? That's so weird. What? That's so weird. Okay. I began day 41 by enchanting my 57th diamond pickaxe, and yeah. So I'm just gonna give up and mine all the rest of the diamond ore. I used my new profits to begin making more diamond things. I made a diamond hat, but I made a diamond hat. But I made a diamond hat. That doesn't make any sense. But I made a diamond hat and continued smacking mob legs. Yo, what? Oh no, Skeleton keeps getting out. Oh my god, what is this glitch? Oh, Skeleton. And expanding the platform a little bit. And after getting carpal tunnel in my pointer finger from clicking my mouse down so much. A witch? Like oh, it was a witch in there. I enchanted my hat. And then I went back to clicking. And a lot of the mobs are still dying on impact, but... Yeah, what are you gonna do? I don't really care to fix it, so... I didn't. But anyways, I kept smacking for the rest of the day, and then continued smacking on day 42. And then I finally got to level 30 again. So I enchanted my shovel, and... Yeah, I'll take that, that's pretty good. Also, the farm does produce a lot of XP, but also enchanting uses up literally all of your levels every time you enchant it, so yeah, that's annoying. I grind all day, I grind all night, I grind all the time till that PP is inside, I mean, I mean till that XP, till that XP is inside. Uh, I'm going insane. Also, I've already ran through like two iron swords so far, but I finally reached level 30 by the end of day 42, so I enchanted my hat. That protection 3D, nice, nice, what's well, definitely worth level 30. I decided to revive my Olympic diving career on the morning of day 43. Whoa, the heck? Whoa, everything looks different. They changed the... Whoa! Everything looks different a little bit. What the heck is that glitch? That's so weird. The new pickaxe. Who dis? That's kind of cringe. I decided to use my new speedy tools to continue working on mining out the circle. I don't know why, but there's something so relaxing about mining in this game. Like just chilling, watching YouTube on my second monitor, and mindlessly grinding on some projects. Something about that is really relaxing to me. I don't know why. I continued working on that and managed to finish making the slope four blocks long. And we were almost at the other end of the circle, so I began making it five blocks long. And I did that for the rest of the day. I continued working on digging out the circle on day 44, and I I managed to reach the other end of the circle, so I began removing the cobblestone outline. Also, I made this staircase at some point. I, uh, forgot to mention that. And surprisingly, I want the ground to be grass, so I began digging out all of the stone and replacing it with dirt and grass. And I continued working on that for the rest of the day. On day 45, we were now in 1.8. 1.8 was dubbed the Bountiful Update, adding these three stone variants along with their polished versions, ocean monuments along with its respective mobs and blocks, slime blocks, banners, and barrier blocks. Yo, what? It unlit my nether portal. That's so weird. Oh, it took a block. I mined some of the exposed ores on the floor of the circle and then went back to replacing the stone with dirt. Continued that process for almost the whole day and I managed to find Then I just ran around the base for a while because I was on the phone with my dad and then began terraforming our perfect slope to look a little bit less like a mathematical graft and more like a natural hill. I did that for the rest of the day and then continued doing that on the beginning of day 46 and I managed to finish it. And in the middle and end of day 46, I continued running around my base doing nothing because I was still on the phone with my dad. But 
I did make the staircase wider. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it right now. Look how beautiful. In the beginning of day 47, and began bone milling my entire base to add some more foliage. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's lush. It's beautiful. It's... I then began breaking a lot of it because it was a bit too much. And then I expanded my storage because I was running out of space. And I was running out of food. to go, uh, out murder. And so I decided to go out and control the population of the local wildlife. And I did that for the rest of the day. And I began smelting our profits on the beginning of day 48. And then I went down to the mines to get some more diamonds. So we can complete our full set of diamond gear. And I continued mining at the speed of light with my fresh new pickaxe. Found some cool looking caves. <sighs> and then found some diamonds. Oh, okay. Ooh, holy crap, that's a big vein. I continued mining and then ran into this abandoned mine shaft. I looked around a little bit, but I was too scared to risk dying, exploring any further, so I just went back to mining. I mined for the rest of the day, and I think I found diamonds again? I don't know, I'm too lazy to look through the footage, but if you're sitting there right now, that I did. We were still mining on the morning of day 49, and we're now in 1.9. 1 1.9 was the infamous combat update. Being infamous, of course, because it added popped chorus fruit. No, I'm just kidding, that's not a real item. Oh, oh wait, it is a real item. Never mind. 1.9 overhauled the combat system, adding a recharge timer in between each attack with the weapon, being different for each tool. It also added the offhand slot and the arguably overpowered shield item. This was also a mini end update, adding end cities along with shulkers and the controversial elytra. Beetroot, dragon's breath, craftable end crystals, grass path blocks, this useless enchantment, and tipped in spectral arrows were also added. I continued mining and immediately found some more diamonds. And with that, I had enough to complete our set of diamond gear. So I headed back up to the surface and then discovered that that you could finally make paths. Oh, let's go. We were also finally in full diamond armor. Let's go, we're finally full diamond. And I remembered that this was the update that added the most overpowered item in the game. So I made our first shield. I then began clearing away for a path through our base. I then began passing in the path for our path. I mean, they, honestly, I didn't need to do this yet, but what can I say? I like paths. And on day 50, I was brutally assaulted. <laughs> we're now officially halfway through this challenge and we've got a lot done so far. Also, yeah, we have replay mod now. Nice. But there's still a lot more work to be done. So I climbed up to the XP farm, and I continued expanding the platform, and also added a wall around the edge to make it a bit safer. I then heightened the death platform up another half block to try and prevent the mobs from dying on impact, and then built a new staircase around the platform. Also, this farm is already getting us tons of bone and gunpowder, which means we basically already have an infinite source of bone meal and fireworks for whenever we get an elytra. And I began grinding on day 51. Also, the enchanting system finally got updated to how it works today, which is good, but that also means that I need a lapis, so I built built a dive chute and headed back down to the base to grab some blue stuff. I checked the enchantments for each piece of gear, what does that even mean? Uh -huh. and then went back to grinding. And yeah, the farm is considerably slower in the new updates, and I'm an impatient man, so I gave up after like two minutes and went down to our mine to mine for XP instead. So I continued mining for the rest of the day. I woke up in the mines on day 52, and I spent like pretty much the whole day mining, so just enjoy this cool replay mod shot of me mining. Yeah. I realized towards the end of day 52 that it would have been faster to just deal with the XP farm, so I went back up to the surface, and then I ran out into this field. I don't remember why I did this. And on day 53, we were now in 1.10. 1.10 was the Frostburn update, and is one of the more pathetic updates of history. It added nether warp blocks along with red nether bricks and bone blocks, polar bears, strays and husks, which are basically just retextured skeletons and zombies, and fossils were added, but they made sure that they were so rare that they will literally impact nothing about the game. And that concludes my unbiased presentation of this update. I climbed back up to the XP farm on the beginning of day 53, and began the grind for level 30. And when I got to level 30, I decided to enchant my axe next, and then went back to the grind. I finally have my skin, nice. And then I enchanted my pants, and then went back to grinding for the rest of the day. On day 54, I enchanted my bow, got back up to level 30, and enchanted my shoes. And with that, we've successfully gotten a full level 30 enchanted diamond armor and tools. Minus a hoe, but those don't count because they're useless in this version. Oh, our next goal in this world is to upgrade all of our armor to netherite, but we're a ways away from the nether update, so for now, I'm just gonna start working on the circle, and I'm gonna add the first build to our circle, our house. And we obviously have to do a spruce and stone bricks block pilot for this house, because they're pretty much like the only good looking blocks in this version of the game. So I began collecting spruce and continued doing that for basically the rest of the day. I began day 55 by replacing these bits of stone with dirt, and then I decided to destroy this part of the path to make way for our house. I then began work on the house. I built these spruce pillars four blocks apart, and then started putting in the foundation. When I began on the walls, I realized it was too small. So on day 56, I made all the pillars six blocks apart instead of four. I'm doing a pretty standard L shape for my house, along with cobblestone for the foundation and stone 
stone brick walls, and I worked on that for almost the whole day, before I decided it was too small again and began rebuilding the pillars some amount of blocks apart, I, I don't even remember at this point. I built up the walls and then went to sleep. I woke up on day 57 in 1.11. Hey, that rhymes. 1.11 was the exploration update, and it added explorer maps, used to locate ocean monuments and the new woodland mansions, and woodland mansions spawn vindicators and evokers, and evokers can spawn vexes, llamas, observers, shulker boxes along with shulker shells, and the controversial totems of undying were also added. Yeah, that's what they used to look like. I decided to just embrace the fact that our house runs into the wall of the circle, and just make it part of the house. I built up the walls some more, and made a nice little entrance, and then poked some holes for the windows. Then I made some glass, and put the windows in. I then made some stone and cracked stone bricks to throw into the walls occasionally to add some variation and texture. And I then began replacing the staircase with stone brick stairs, because I look better. I finished doing that in the beginning of day 58, and then began heightening the walls of our house. Then I ran out of wood, so I went back to farming spruce trees. I added these beams to the walls, added some of the ceiling, and then I began on building the roof out of spruce stairs. Also, I decided to lower these beams by a block. I continued doing that on the beginning of day 59, and then continued working on the roof. I worked on that for pretty much the rest of the day, and made sure to extend the wall up behind these triangle portions. Then I went back to farming spruce wood because I ran out. Then I saw this spider who looked like he was on something, but he wouldn't tell me who his dealer was, so I unalived him. Then I went back to adding in the roof on day 60 and managed to finally finish it. I then decided to terraform this section to make it look like the land has kind of grown over the roof and the house is like merging with the land almost. And then I finished this other roof or ceiling or whatever and then took a step back to take a look at the build. And it's kinda too big. Oh well. I also forgot about enchanting a sword, so I went down to the mines and began mining to get to level 30. And I woke up on day 61 in a new version, 1.12. 1.12 was the RGBTQ update. Oh, I mean the world of color update. Adding colored beds, concrete and concrete powder, glazed terracotta, parrots, and the illusioner mob. Which doesn't spawn naturally, although it should. I made our diamond sword on the beginning of day 61, and then went up to the XP farm and got up to level 30 and enchanted my sword. Okay, that's fine. I took a second look at the circle, and uh, I think it needs to be bigger. So I began deciding on the size of the new circle, and began putting in the new outline with cobblestone. And I did that for the rest of the day. I continued putting in the cobblestone outline on day 62, but I was having a little bit of trouble getting the circle to line up. What the? Okay, see, it's wrong. All of this is wrong. Two, three, four, five. It's <laughs> all wrong. I continued trying to figure out what I was doing wrong with the circle outline on day 63, and I managed to figure it out and complete the outline. Okay, so that's right. Perfect. I then began digging out the bigger circle, and then this random glitch caused me to take damage for no reason. What was that? What is happening? What? What? Yeah, I don't know why that was happening. So I decided to go farm wood instead, so I could make a ton of chests and begin moving all of our things into our new home. I continued moving in our stuff, making sure to follow my extremely strict organization system along the way, so I know where everything is. I woke up on day 64 in 1.13. 1.13 was, I feel like, the beginning of the modern Minecraft phase of update history, being that it was the first in a series of updates that raised the bar for update size and update quality. And because of that, I'm no longer going to be covering absolutely every single feature added in these updates, because they're just so big. And with all the major changes comes a lot of fluff. But I will be going over almost everything. Everything important. 1.13 added blue ice, bubble columns, conduits, coral along with its respective blocks, kelp and dried kelp which comes from seagrass, sea pickles, stripped wood finally, turtles and turtle eggs, fish can be picked up at buckets, buried treasures, ocean ruins and shipwrecks along with the hearts of the sea, nautilus shells, these disgusting things along with their organs, a turtle helmet, tridents along with new trident specific enchantments, dolphins, drowned, and fish are now actually mobs that swim through the water. And that glitch isn't happening anymore, so that's cool. I continued moving all of our stuff into the house on the beginning of day 64, and managed to finish moving everything in. I then went back to digging out the bigger circle, and these enchanted tools definitely made the process a lot faster than the original circle. I also had to defile the back of my house. So I began destroying all the chests I just put in, and then on day 65, I began putting them all back in their new place, and then began adding the back wall to our house. I also went back in and added this previously missing corner of the roof. Then I continued digging out the circle, reorganized my apartment a bit, and then went back to breaking stone. I did that for the rest of the day, and I managed to pretty much finish. On day 66, I began doing some terraform. I then began destroying this wall of our house to add a second entrance, and made the area around it look a little nicer too. I then began replacing all of the stone in the floor with dirt and grass. And then then I began digging out the new staircase down to the circle. Then I added in the stairs and chopped down these trees on the edge of the circle. I woke up on day 67 in 1.14. Yo! 1.14 was the village and pillage update, which overhauled the villages. This update added bamboo along with scaffolding, bells, campfires, note blocks. Wait, really? 
I had no idea those were added so recently. What the? Berries, crossbows, lanterns, leather horse armor, suspicious stew, pandas, foxes, wandering traders, and all of the new villager workstations. And honestly, I did not realize how many workstations there actually were. That's, uh, that's, that's a lot. And not all of these have a function yet outside of villager trading. Also, ravagers and pillagers, along with the pillager outposts and raids. This was also the update that overhauled almost every single texture in the game. And it was also the first update to have an animated trailer made for it. I immediately realized I can strip logs now. Should I? Hmm. Hmm, that's a good question. So I decided to strip these beams because I think it makes the house look a little bit. Also, the world looks so much better now because all the textures just Whoa, got updated. Oh, look at this world. Everything's new. Everything's fresh. I chopped down some trees around the edge of the circle, made a little path leading to the second entrance of our house, and then began farming a ton more spruce wood. I then went behind our house and finished up working on making all the ugly stuff back here not look ugly anymore. And I managed to finish doing that on the morning of day 68. I then decided to set sail in order to find some snow for the next build I want to do, the sheep farm. Oh, look at that. It's corrupted terrain. Nice, nice, nice. Oh my gosh, what the heck? That, this is so cool. And we immediately ran into a snowy biome. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, I accidentally saw this was here when I was looking at MCA selector. Oops. But then I remembered my shovel has silk touch and will just give me snow layers instead of snow. So I collected some ice instead. Then I explored the surrounding area a little. <laughs> this is just so weird. That this is just a normal pig. Well, let's see what happens if I murder it. It turns into food. But I didn't really find anything. So I went back home so I could get some bones and I iron shovels, and then went back to the snow biome, and, oh, nice. Haha, I get it, it's the funny number, guys. I began day 69 by getting some friends, and then turning my friends into an army, because there were so many wolves nearby. I then began collecting a ton of snow, and I also got some spruce wood as well. Then I headed home, what? That is epic. And unfortunately, pretty much none of my dogs managed to follow me. Then these path blocks started glitching what out for some is, reason. What is wrong with this area? But anyways, the next thing I want to build in the circle is a wool farm, so I can have a ton of wool for bed making, in order to mine for ancient debris once we get to the nether update. And I want to do an igloo thing around the farm, because I think that'll look cool, so I began placing in the snow for the igloo. Just glitching everywhere, jeez. What? 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 Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. No, it went away. And I did that for the rest of the day. I woke up on day 70 in 1.15. 1 1.15, the Buzzy Bees update, was the calm before the storm that was the nether update. Adding bees along with beehives and nests, honey bottles along with honey blocks, and honeycombs along with honeycomb blocks. This update was small, but the honey block did allow for some really cool redstone inventions. Then I destroyed the igloo, because I decided I should probably build the farm first, and then build the igloo around it. So I began collecting all of the resources I needed for the farm. And I also hopped into the nether to grab some quartz I needed for observers. Then I got the rest of the things we needed and headed out to find some sheep. But for some reason, I was having trouble finding some. It seemed like only cows and pigs were spawning around my base for some reason. But there's only pigs here. What the heck? And I ended up going all the way out to this village and I still didn't find any sheep. Also, this village got like completely corrupted. <laughs> It looks funny. There were no beds in this village, and it was becoming nighttime, so I decided to make a dash back to the base. I traversed through a ton of corrupted terrain, and then managed to find a sheep in the forest. I noted the coordinates, and then continued back to the base to skip through the night. On day 71, I headed back out to find the sheep, and then I lured him into my basement, and trapped him in this hole. Then I made the remaining things we needed for the farm, and began working on the farm. I'm following a tutorial by Shulkcraft, so go subscribe to them. After you subscribe to me, and watch the rest of this video, of course. On day 72, I began luring the sheep into their new forever homes. Well, more like forever prisons but they don't need to think of it that way. It was a little finicky, but I managed to get all of them into their pens. I filled all the dispensers with shears, and then sheared them all at once to get the farm started. But it wasn't working. And then I realized I made an oopsie. I think I built it wrong. So I rebuilt the underside two blocks forward, and then began setting up an easier and nicer looking way to access the chests. And now the farm should be fully functional, so we can begin work on the igloo build around it. I verified that it was working on the beginning of day 73, and we are now in 1.16. 1.16 is widely regarded as the best and biggest Minecraft update of all time, being as it overhauled an entire dimension, the nether. <coughs> 1.21 should be the end update. <coughs> this update added four new biomes to the nether, basalt deltas, crimson forest, warped forests, and soul sand valleys. Along with these biomes came a host of new blocks, including soul soil, warped and crimson wood sets, warped fungus, basalt and all the blocks it makes, blackstone and all the blocks it makes, and nether gold ore. This update also added three new structures, nether fossils, ruined portals, which generated in the nether and the overworld, and the biggest one, bastions, and four new mobs, piglins, hoglins, striders, and zoglins, along with ancient debris needed to craft netherite, the new armor and tool tier. This is a feature loved by some players and loathed by others. Lodestones, respawn anchors, and a new music disc, pig step, were also added. There's a lot more to go into about this update, but unfortunately if I did that, this video would be like 8 hours long, so on with the video. Since this update completely overhauled the nether, and we haven't really done anything in the nether yet, I decided to reset my nether using MCA selector. So I hopped into our portal to make sure the nether was reset, and it was, but we spawned in literally 
probably the most dangerous biome. So, that's nice. So I quickly built a shelter around our portal and then went back to the overworld. I then made a couple shovels. Yeah, uh, just a couple. And headed over to the snowy biome again to get some more snow. Then I got some more snow. Yeah, I did that for the rest of day 73 and continued doing that on day 74. Oh, sorry. After completely stripping this forest of its dignity, I headed back to the base and began farming more spruce wood. I continued that for the rest of the day and then headed out to get some cows at the end of the day. For some reason, I can't remember. I found some cows in the beginning of day 75 and lured them back to the base. I dug out some space for them and now I remember why I was doing this. It's to make a cow crusher and then realized my cows ran away. I guess they knew it was coming, but I found them and against their better judgment, they just couldn't resist that tasty dead grass and I managed to get them into the cow crusher. I finished up the farm, but this baby cow managed to escape. So my doggo did what had to be done. And yeah, that's literally the whole farm. It's insanely easy. I then began working on the igloo over the farms. Then I laid up around the base some more and then ran into some more tall grass. Then I went sleep. I continued building the igloo on day 76 and finished it. Well, I still gotta decorate, but yeah. So I began spamming these snow layers around the whole thing to make it look more natural. Then I spruced up the entrance with some spruce, and then I began replacing the floor with spruce wood. But the sheep farm needs grass around it, so I didn't replace that grass. I also added some ice around it to make it look more icy. I don't know. I also added a front door, and with that, the second build of the circle is basically complete. On day 77, I woke up in 1.17. 1.17 was the long-awaited cave update, part one. Of four. Yeah, so this is when Minecraft updates took a turn in the wrong direction in the eyes of many. Not because of the content in the update, but because Mojang made a lot of promises for the update that they just couldn't keep. They ended up splitting the update into two parts, but really this update was four parts because ancient cities weren't added until 1.19, and archaeology wasn't added until 1.20, and the bundle still hasn't been fully implemented into the game yet. But anyways, 1.17 added amethyst geodes along with the new amethyst crystals, azalea trees along with azalea bushes and moss, the spyglass, powder snow, copper, tuff, tinted glass, rooted dirt, lightning rods, glow lichen, drip leaf, deep slate along with the deep slate ore variants and all the beautiful blocks you can craft from deep slate, hanging roots? I literally did not know that was a thing that existed in this game. Also, spore blossoms, dripstones, skulk sensors, which are currently only available through commands. And this update also added three new mobs, glow squids, goats, and my brethren, axolotls. Also, gold and iron no longer drop the ore blocks, instead dropping raw iron and raw gold. On the morning of day 77, I went down to the mines and began mining downwards, because I thought 1.17 lowered the world depth, but... It didn't. So I went back upstairs and began removing the cobblestone outline of the new circle. Also, for some reason, OBS decided not to record the game audio for like the next seven days. So, sorry. But then I decided to add this chimney thing to the igloo, and I think it looks pretty cool. Then this wandering trader spawn, and then his llamas despawn. I wonder how that happened. I made some more chains and lanterns, and began adding them around the base, to add some better looking light. And on day 78, it was time to head into the nether to mine for netherite. The wool farm had enough time to run, so we have plenty of wool for beds now. So I hopped into the nether and began mining down to Y15. And with my inventory full of beds, I began a series of fruitless attempts to sleep in the nether. And I found our first ancient debris relatively quickly. Unfortunately, I don't have any fires resistance potions, so this is kind of dangerous, but I do have fire protection armor on, so we should be good. I exploded for the rest of the day and managed to find two more ancient debris. I was still in the netherlands on day 79 and continued my strategy of mining a long tunnel, then blowing up said tunnel with beds and collecting profits. I managed to find four more ancient debris and then ran out of beds. I also lost the entrance, but I eventually escaped the nether back rooms and returned to the overworld. And then I made my first netherite ingot and my first smithing table, and boom, our first piece of netherite armor epic. I squashed this insect and then schlepped. On day 80, we woke up in 1.18, and I immediately ran down to the mines to grab myself some deep slate, which is truly one of the most blocks of all time. 1.18 was the world generation half of Caves and Cliffs, so the only new item added was the other side music disc. The world height was increased from Y256 to Y319, and the bottom of the world was lowered from Y0 to Y-64. War generations were changed, and now the most diamonds will spawn at Y-64, and the most general resources will spawn around Y0. Lush caves and dripstone caves biomes now spawn naturally. Cave generation was also completely overhauled and is a lot different than previous. And six new mountain biomes were added. Meadows, groves, snowy slopes, jagged peaks, frozen peaks, and stony peaks. Ore veins now generate naturally around tuff containing lots of ore blocks and even full blocks of raw iron and copper ore. Then I went up to the XP farm to grab some string to make into wool for beds. And with over a stack of wool, I headed back into the nether to mine for more netherite. I exploded beds for the rest of the day and managed to find three more ancient debris. I 
continued detonating explosives on day 81 and then had kind of a close call. Except it wasn't really a close call because fire protection is overpowered I guess. But I continued mining until I ran out of beds and I managed to get 7 more ancient debris and then headed home. On day 82 I had enough ancient debris to make 3 more netherite ingots and with that I was able to upgrade every other piece of my armor and complete my full set of netherite armor. So we've completed the third goal of the video and our final main goal for this video is to find the new armor trims and get a trim on every piece of our armor. But we won't be able to look for those until 1.20 so for now I went down to the mines again and began hacking away at deep slate. Also I kind of didn't expect caves to generate in deep slate level but they did. Then I immediately found an amethyst geo so I absolutely mutilated it for all it was worth. Then I kept mining and found this massive vein of okay, diamonds. Okay nice. <laughs> oh my gosh what? Yeah modern ore generation is crazy. Then I went back up to the surface and thought about what I should build next. I uh I didn't come up with any ideas though. On day 83 we were in 1.19. 1.19 was another massive update for the underground. Most notably adding ancient cities, the home of the new warden mob. And this giant structure in the middle has caused many to suspect that a new dimension is coming to the game. And this is the portal to it. But this hasn't been confirmed. Ancient cities spawn under areas of low erosion, whatever that means, and in the new deep dark caves biome. The deep dark spawns skulk blocks, skulk sensors, skulk shriekers, and skulk catalysts. Echo shards and disc fragments which craft the new music disc, 5, and the recovery compass can be found in ancient city chests along with the swift sneak armor enchantment. Mangrove swamps added the mangrove wood set, mud blocks, roots, frogs along with frog lights, and fire fu oh, yeah, never mind. But alleys and chest boats were added, so that's pretty cool. I guess. I was running out of storage, so I made some more chests. And I think the next thing I want to build is a mini wheat field. Just because when I think of a cool Minecraft base, I think of a wheat field. So I destroyed this path here and then began tilling and adding water sources. Also, I made a diamond hoe. I removed our old wheat farm and placed all the seeds into our new wheat field. Then I used some bone meal to grow everything up, destroy it, and then fill up the whole field with seeds. The next thing I want to add to the circle is a proper decorated nether portal. So on the beginning of day 84, I broke down our old scuffed nether portal and began preparing the area for the new portal. I marked where I wanted to place the nether portal with dirt and then placed in the portal. And I want to make it look like the nether is leaking into the overworld from the portal. So I began replacing the dirt with netherite. I played around with the blending with the grass and then added in some other nether blocks like blackstone, basalt, uh, just blackstone and basalt, that's all I had. I kinda made the blackstone and basalt formations look like they were forming onto the portal and then I realized they perfectly hid the missing obsidian in the portal. So now I don't have to go get more. Epic. Then I finally lit the portal. Then I hopped in the portal to see where we'd end up and it just took us to the old portal location so... That was nice. And with those two builds, the base is starting to look a bit more complete. I lit up around my base some more, and then on day 85, we were finally in 1.20, the latest release of the game. And finally, the newest update to Minecraft as of the release of this video, 1.20, Tales and Trails, aka Caves and Cliffs Part 4, aka the random sh- no, I'm just kidding, but this update is the first update in years to break away from a strict theme and kind of just add random stuff. It added the Sniffer Mob, voted in from the 2022 Mob Vote, which is an ancient dinosaur that digs up seeds for two new plants. Sniffers are hatched via sniffer eggs which are obtained via the brand new archaeology system. Archaeology adds sussy sand and gravel spawning at all these structures and the new brush item. You can get sniffer eggs or any of the 20 pottery sherds used to craft decorated pots. Netherite is now harder to obtain, requiring a netherite upgrade template only found in bastions. Armor trims come in 16 varieties and can be applied to every piece of armor in the color of any ore material in the game, allowing for over 86 billion different armor combinations. Dang. The beautiful new cherry grove biome along with the cherry wood set and cherry flowers, camels which spawn in desert villages were added along with the bamboo wood set, calibrated skulk sensors which I don't really understand enough to explain, chiseled bookshelves, hanging signs, piglin heads, and the trail ruins which are basically just a structure made for the archaeology system. And we got to 1.20 a little early cause I want to explore all the new content and I can't really do that in like 3 or 4 days so I gave us 15 days in 1.20 so we have more time to look at all the new content. I began day 85 by making the entrance to the circle look a little nicer with some spruce and deep slate bricks. And yeah I think it looks a lot better. I also added some fences and lanterns. And it's now time to set out into the world to explore this beautiful update. So I began preparing for our great expedition. And on day 86, I headed up to our mob farm to grab some string for an archaeology brush, and then set sail. I have three goals for these last 15 days of the video. One, find a cherry grove biome. Two, get a sniffer. Three, get armor trims. And I guess four, finish the base. I used MCA selector to delete all of the chunks I generated when I was boating for like six years earlier on in the challenge, so new chunks will be a little closer to us. And then I almost died. Oh, oh. Yeah. Maybe wouldn't have been good. Then I found an azalea tree. You won't get any bushes from this. Uh, oh, oh I did. Okay. I continued exploring for the rest of the day, and yeah. I kind of forgot how crazy modern terrain generation was. It's about the biggest mountain biome that I've ever seen in my life. I continued traversing Mount Everest on the beginning of day 87, and whose idea was powdered snow? Fire them. 
now. It's a village. I also finally found some non-snowy, non-mountainy terrain, but still no cherry grove. Bro. Also, my strategy so far is just to build up and correct my render distance all the way up, but uh, it's not working so far, so I guess I don't recommend it. I continued searching for the cherry grove biome on day 88. <laughs> I did finally find some more non-snowy biomes, but they were all just forests. Then I found a plains, but still no cherry. I'm sad. I hit the ocean on day 89, so I set sail to become king of the pirates. Wait, wrong anime. And then I finally found it. Oh. Yes, here we are. It's, uh, kinda tiny? It was pretty tiny, but I do really like this biome. I did wish it had more water features though, because the water color is just so good looking. After exploring the two square feet of cherry grove forest, I set out to find some copper, so I can make a brush, so I can get a sniffer egg. So I began day 90 by searching for copper. Really? Copper is supposed to be like the most common thing. Okay, there's some copper. There we go. Ah, I don't have enough cobblestone. How embarrassing. Then I began smelting, and then I made the first archaeology brush of the world, which I thought you needed string for, but it's a feather. And then I set out to look for some ocean ruins, to sift for sniffer Eggs. I also crafted a ton of doors for water breathing purposes, but then I went to this jungle to get some bamboo first. Okay, now I'm gonna go find some ocean rooms. I continued rowing for a while and then found this shipwreck, but no armor trims. This is so sad. I continued sailing on day 91 and found another shipwreck, but still no armor trim. Then another one, but no armor trim. And then I finally found some ocean rooms. And I began dealing with the massive herd of drown. And I didn't know they updated their swimming animation. They look so much cleaner now. Well, their animations are good. They're still really dirty. Luckily, none of them had a trident, and I swiftly unalived all of them. And then I began excavating all of the sussy sand. Okay, I'll stop calling it that, I'm sorry. I found some sherds, some emeralds, some more garbage, but no sniffer eggs. I continued swimming around looking for suspicious blocks, drowning, and excavating for the rest of the day and even into the night of day 91. Okay, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to give up. <laughs> That's a little anticlimactic, but uh, yeah, I searched pretty much all night and I did not find a single sniffer egg. Yeah, so I was pretty much ready to give up on the morning of day 92. I looked around a little bit more and did find a couple more suspicious blocks, but still no sniffer eggs. So I decided to leave. I found another shipwreck with no trims, and then on day 93, I got back to land and began heading back to the base. But yeah, unfortunately, we failed our second goal of getting a sniffer egg. Although we've successfully completed our first goal of finding a cherry I should have put them more chests, because I forgot about armor trims, actually. Also, I ran into this interesting shipwreck on the way home and... Oh, who? What was I just saying? Yeah, so at least we completed two thirds of our wall. That's 66%. That's like a D. So we didn't fail. I found another ocean ruin and couldn't help myself from checking for a sniffer, but I didn't find one. Then I found another shipwreck with some more armor trims. Then on day 94, I found this massive ocean room in this ice pile, but there were a ton of drowned and it was getting pretty close to day 100 and there's still a few more things I want to get done, so I just gave up on it. And it's a good thing that I did because after actually looking it up after recording the video, I'm pretty sure you can only find sniffer eggs in warm ocean ocean ruins. So, uh... That's a bro moment. So I began boating down this ice river, found another village, and then found Antarctica. I continued exploring for the rest of the day, and on day 95, I continued skedaddling back to the base. Corrupted chunks as far as the eye can see. That's how you can tell we're home. And I finally made it back to the base. Let's go! We're back! I unloaded all of our profits, and then began adding the trims to our armor. I decided that diamond would look best, and added them to our armor. And boom, we finally completed all of our goals. I kinda like it. I kinda like that. Well. Almost all of them. Unfortunately, we have no dinosaur to sniff up stinky seeds for us. On day 96, I began mission make the base look more completed so the thumbnail looks better. I, I mean, so that the base looks better. Yeah. I began clearing an area at the top where I plan on putting a little showcase of 1.20 where you can also get the best view of the base. So I built up this little plateau of sorts to build the 1.20 showcase on and then started by planting the first cherry tree of the base and then went around the base and planted a ton more. And I honestly think these trees just make everything look better. I also bone milled a ton of these flower petals and then spammed them around the base. Then I farmed some bamboo and made the first bamboo wood of the world. Epic. I began day 97 by grabbing some clay so we could make some decorated pots. Then I added another cherry tree to the base. Then I went down to the mines to farm some moss and azalea stuff for decoration. Then I bone milled more cherry petals and put more of them around the base, cause they just look so good. I ran out of it already, what the heck? Then I added this bamboo raft to the 1.20 showcase area. Then I began adding these moss carpets and azalea bushes everywhere, cause they also just make everything look better. Then I farmed some strip of wood. Kinda weird, but you need them for the new hanging signs. And then I began adding some hanging signs around the base. I connected the path up to the 1.20 plateau, spammed a bunch of torches around our base, and completely whacked some bamboo, made a decorated pot at some point, and then on day 98, I used the pots to decorate. Then I added some bamboo around the base, because I also think bamboo just makes bases look nicer. And I tried adding this cherry tree here, but it didn't really look right, so I chopped it down. And now we need to do something about this gaping hole in the base. I think I want to build a pond here, but also somehow incorporate 1.20 and caves and cliffs somehow. So I began constructing the pond, and once I had a pond, I added this little bamboo dock, and a bamboo boat docked at the dock. And I began day 99 by farming more bamboo. And then I added this little, uh, 
I don't really know what this is supposed to be, but it looks good. And I decided what was needed next was a mini waterfall. So I began putting that in. And boom, it's beautiful. And now I want to add a mini amethyst geo by the pond. Because I just have to use all the stuff I got for mining out that geo. I mean... It would be a crime not to. I added a partial sphere of the funny sounding shiny purple stuff, then surrounded that with some calcium, and then surrounded that with some soothing bath salts. And... Wait, hold up. And yeah, that looks pretty good. And we're officially on day 100. Finally, I wanted to do something with this area. And I wanted to do cherry, but I don't know what to build yet. But I cleared an area, and I decided on like a little sitting area around a campfire type. So I placed in some chairs, and then it started raining. I had to be on day 100. Bro. And then I made this fireplace. Yeah, I think it looks good. I tried building this mini cherry tree too, but it just blocked the view of the pond from the plateau, so I deleted it. And finally, I took one last look at our completed base. And with that, I've officially survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft from inf day all the way to the new 1.20 update. And I decided to take a look at our old bases in a backup world. This has got to be, yeah, yeah, nice. Oh my gosh, look at all the leaves. They really did just get corrupted. They just get, wait, wait, what? And then I guess uh, for some reason a spruce decided to spawn in here. I hope it didn't delete our old base. Unfortunately, I accidentally deleted the chunks when I was trying to get the world updated and now it doesn't exist because it should be right here. Also, only 0% of my viewers are actually patrons. Becoming a patron is only $3 a month with the gold tier and with that you can get early access to the videos, world downloads for this world, the survival island, one block, and all 100 days videos I do in the future and it just helps me get closer to my dream of making YouTube my job. If everyone watching right now became a patron, that would uh, that would actually, that would actually be insane. That would literally change my whole life. That would be insane. Also, free 7 day trials. Just do it. Please. But seriously, thank you guys so much for all the support recently. I don't plan on slowing down, so get ready for the most fire 100 days content and hardcore episodes you've ever seen. Thank you for watching. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.